Welcome to Slight Hand, where rogues scheme, dice roll, and the mysteries of Dungeons and Dragons unfold. Today we dive into the heart of the multiverse where Sigil lies. What you need to know is that Sigil is no mere city, it is a celestial marvel. Sigil is, all at once, the cage, the city of doors, and in hushed tones, the city of secrets. High above the skies of the outlands, Sigil floats suspended in the sky. It is definitely an audacious city for Sigil, has proclaimed itself the very heart of the cosmos. It is a claim that few dare to challenge, for Sigil is not just a hub for traveling between different worlds. It's like the central hub of existence itself. Within the confines of this fantastical city, portals unfurl like magical carpets, whisking travelers away to every conceivable plane of existence. Sigil's streets bear witness to the convergence of countless realities, and its thoroughfares are lined with doorways that lead to both the extraordinary and the mundane realms of the prime material plane. In the heart of the timeless outlands, where the very essence of existence stood for eternity, Sigil materialized. It's like a floating city crown on top of a massive tower known as the Spire, which is so tall it reaches into the heavens. Now it is no ordinary city, for it takes the shape of a torus, a monumental ring of wonder that spirals and swirls. The Harmonium, those diligent chroniclers of the arcane, once ventured to measure the city's grandeur. They decreed that the primary diameter of this city ring was a staggering five miles, and its circumference, an astounding twenty miles, wrapped like a mystical ribbon around the dreamscape. In Sigil, nothing is as it seems, and the Lady of Pain, an enigmatic deity of unknowable power, holds the city in her ethereal grasp. She can alter its dimensions on a whim, reshaping reality as if it were mere clay in her hands. In the realm where logic and possibility intermingled with the fantastical, Sigil stands as the enigma of enigmas, a place that defies the very laws of the material plane sages, rendering their parchments and ponderings utterly impotent. It is simply too mysterious. Within the heart of the outlands, where even the most potent of magics stuttered to naught, Sigil is an exception, a marvel where arcane forces flow as freely as a river's current. Yet, such was the whimsy of the multiverse that spells of planar travel found themselves stifled in this remarkable city, for even the Lady of Pain has her limits. Many a scholar and sage, their brows furrowed in contemplation, have sought to unveil the secrets of Sigil's existence. Their hypotheses range as wide as the infinite cosmos itself, but one legend lingered like a haunting refrain. The Lady of Pain was the weaver of Sigil's tapestry, shaping its very essence. Sigil, though does not occupy the entirety of this celestial ring, it clings only to the outer curve, a fractal reflection in one direction along its majestic circumference. Within its curious confines, the laws of perspective will play tricks on you, for the city is a realm where looking upwards reveals the far side of the ring like a never-ending valley. Along the edges of this cosmic ring, sturdy buildings stand, shrouded in shadow, their windows forever gazing inward. The audacious few who dared to scale rooftops in search of the unknown found naught, but the abyssal void no stars, no empty space, but a void of absolute nothingness. Those foolhardy souls who leaped over the precipice were condemned, disappearing into the maw of random planes, their destinies woven into the ever-changing fabric of the multiverse. And so, Sigil boasts no sky, for it dwells within its own self-contained reality. Illumination comes not from a distant sun, but from the very air itself a luminous essence that wax and wanes, mimicking the rhythms of day and night. The zenith of this ethereal performance is known as Peak, while on the other end it was dubbed the Antipeak. Time in this surreal city flows not in hours and minutes, but in countdowns to peak and increments after peak. Thus, for most of its existence, Sigil basked in the gentle glow of twilight, and even creatures with a penchant for daylight were at ease. Amidst the labyrinthine streets of Sigil, buildings jostle for space like giants squeezed into tight corsets. It's a metropolis where living quarters are meager, and the cityscape is in a constant state of flux, where new edifices sprout like mushrooms after a rainstorm, and once grand structures plunge into subterranean oblivion, becoming crypts for the forgotten. Sigil's architecture bears the mark of a peculiar aesthetic, a fusion of practicality and elegance, Iron spikes and bladed fences adorn the buildings, not merely as embellishments, but as sentinels against unwelcome intruders. These fierce defenses serve not only to deter the unwanted, but also to proclaim a distinct style that is uniquely Sigil. 
There are gargoyles of stone that adorn the cityscape, their forms echoing the enigmatic spirit of the place, and the weather of Sigil. It's a realm where smog clings to the air like a shroud of secrets, where the heavens weep chilly raindrops upon the cobbled streets, and where, occasionally, a veil of clarity descends. The smog, birthed from a myriad of chimneys, is a constant companion, a persistent veil that often shrouds the city's mysteries, reducing visibility to a mere ten yards, and sometimes, in the direst of times, a paltry five feet. When the heavens weep, the raindrops mix with the filth of walls and the impurities of the air, transmuting into a drizzle of muddy brown, a surreal symphony of nature and industry. Yet, after the deluge, the city takes a respite, casting away its murky visage. Gentle breezes whisper through the streets, and a soothing coolness graces the air, if only for a fleeting moment. It's in these serene interludes that Sigil reveals its more temperate side, a place where even the most tenacious mysteries find a moment of reprieve. Sigil occupies a place of unparalleled significance, or so the inhabitants of the city are fond of proclaiming. Nestled within the very heart of the outlands, this wondrous realm boasts a central position, equidistant from the gate towns that serve as gateways to the myriad outer plains. Some, with an inclination for poetic interpretation of the Great Wheel cosmology, whisper that Sigil stands as the true axis of the plains, a claim that kindles the fires of endless debates among scholars and sages. Most learned minds, however, acknowledge the infinite expanse of the multiverse, where the concept of a singular center becomes as elusive as a wisp of smoke. They concede that no absolute center exists within the cosmos. Nevertheless, Sigil is, without dispute, one of the most venerated and pivotal locales in the grand narrative of existence. Sigil, it must be understood, is a realm of impossibilities. One cannot simply stride into its embrace from the outlands or any other earthly domain. Nor can one penetrate its enigmatic walls through the artistry of spells, the charm of magic items, or the innate abilities of even the most extraordinary beings. The city dares to defy such intrusion, shrouding itself from prying eyes and mystical incursions. Even spells of interplanar travel, arcane marvels like plane shift, gate, and astral projection find themselves ensnared in the web of Sigil's peculiar nature, incapable of entering or departing the city. Yet, Sigil maintains a curious tether to the astral plane, permitting spells like Ray's Dead, which rely upon access to the astral to function. Teleportation within the city's boundaries flows as smoothly as a river's current, offering a semblance of normalcy amidst the enigma. In Sigil, the ethereal plane remains, but a distant memory, severed from the city's grasp, as with all realms of the outer planes. The only passage into or out of this celestial enigma lies within its labyrinthine network of portals. Any threshold, whether humble doorways, arches, barrel hoops, or even the frames of pictures, holds the potential to be a portal, a conduit to other planes, or merely to another corner of Sigil itself. The portals, as capricious as the city they adorn, can be permanent or ephemeral, leading to fixed destinations or ever-shifting realms. Thus, Sigil reaches out to touch every plane within the cosmos, yet it pledges its allegiance to none. This dual nature of the city earns it the moniker, the City of Doors, a tribute to its abundance of portals, and the Cage, an acknowledgement of its defiance to enter or exit with ease. In the grand saga of the multiverse, Sigil stands as a riddle wrapped in an enigma, a place where the very boundaries of existence blur, and the doors to countless adventures swing wide. In the enigmatic heart of Sigil, the supreme ruler is none other than the enigmatic Lady of Pain, a figure cloaked in mystery and seated upon the imposing throne of blades. Her dominion extends far and wide, for she holds sway over every portal within the city, and her iron will bars the entry of deities and archfiends into its sacred precincts. The Lady of Pain, a being of inscrutable motives, does not concern herself with the everyday governance of Sigil. She is an observer from the shadows, intervening only when a dire threat looms over the city's stability, or when her strict but unyielding edicts are breached. These edicts, simple in their essence, mandate the preservation of peace and the abandonment of any act of worship directed towards her. Swift and merciless, the Lady of Pain is a guardian of her realm, and those who transgress her laws, even inadvertently, risk a gruesome fate flayed alive or consigned to the labyrinthine abysses of the Lady's mazes, from which return is but an empty dream. Legends speak of would-be usurpers of the Throne of Blades, banished to the desolation of Agathian, the third layer of Pandemonium, 
a realm of chaos and despair. While the lady herself remains aloof from the daily life of Sigil, her will is enforced by a silent cadre of servants known as the Dabas. These beings are the eyes and ears of their mistress, and they maintain the structural integrity of the city. The Dabas rarely interact with the city's inhabitants or travelers, and it is wise to steer clear of them, for provoking their ire risks, incurring the wrath of their unforgiving mistress. My bad. They can speak, they just would rather piss everyone else off by trying to puzzle out what they're saying. Mort, a companion of the Nameless One. The Dabas serve as Sigil's silent caretakers, constantly recycling materials from one structure to construct another. They are believed to hold the secrets of the city's inner workings, and some whisper that they are the true rulers of Sigil, orchestrating its destiny from the hidden depths of its cryptic underground. Under the Lady of Pain's uncompromising edicts, Sigil emerges as a bastion of true neutrality, a sanctuary where the ravages of war remain, but a distant memory. Here, even the most bitter of adversaries, be they angel or fiend, devil or demon, can find common ground and share a drink in a fleeting moment of respite from their eternal struggles. However, do not mistake Sigil for a realm of tranquility. The Lady of Pain concerns herself not with common crimes like murder or theft, leaving the task of day-to-day -day law enforcement to the inhabitants and the ever-watchful Debus. This precarious balance, this delicate dance on the edge of anarchy, lends Sigil an air of perpetual tension, where the whisper of chaos can be heard, lurking just beneath the surface. In the bustling heart of Sigil, the city stands as a prime destination, drawing travelers from all corners of the multiverse and serving as a vibrant nexus of trade that spans realms beyond reckoning. In this cosmopolitan crossroads, merchants accept currencies as diverse as the planes themselves, for Sigil knows no bounds when it comes to commerce. The pulsing heart of trade resides within the great bazaar of the market ward, a vibrant marketplace where the wares of countless worlds find eager buyers. But Sigil's commerce is not confined to this grand square. Throughout the city, street markets spring to life, each with its own unique character and part-time operations. Day markets teem with the bounty of food and household goods, while night markets beckon with an even greater offering. Sigil, a realm devoid of natural resources, relies upon a steady flow of imports, even for the most basic of necessities, such as sustenance and raw materials. Yet, the city possesses an unparalleled asset the countless portals that stitch its reality to the fabric of the multiverse. Thus, the well-being of Sigil is intrinsically tied to the diverse tastes and needs of its transient visitors. In Sigil, the foremost priority is the comfort and satisfaction of its guests. The city boasts a dizzying array of inns and taverns, each a unique realm unto itself, evoking the ambience of far-off lands and exotic locales. These establishments cater to the whims and desires of all who wander through the city of doors. With a constant influx of travelers eager to exchange their wares, Sigil becomes renowned as the hub where anything can be procured for the right price. Goods from the prime material plane, like bronzewood from Oerth or fire wine from Toral, mingle with the exotic treasures of otherworldly realms. It is here that traders seek their elusive treasures before embarking on quests to distant plains. The city's services cater to the needs of traders, travelers, and denizens alike. Bodyguards, mercenaries, and relentless bill collectors offer their skills to those in need. Wizards, too, are drawn to Sigil, recognizing its unique magic item production. Items crafted within the cage hold an exceptional resistance to the planar forces that often weaken enchantments. Although these magical treasures fetch steep prices, the elusive vendors who peddle them prove challenging to locate. Amid the bustling streets, a web of services flourishes. 1. Touts. Unofficial city guides who, for a fee, help navigate the labyrinthine mysteries of Sigil. Yet, caution is advised, for some touts serve hidden agendas or seek to exploit unsuspecting travelers. 2. Factotums. These official guides are sanctioned by various factions, versed not only in the city's maze-like streets, but also in its intricate political currents. 3. Public transportation. Sedan chairs, the city's primary mode of transport, ferrying up to two passengers each. Their reach did not extend to all corners of Sigil, as certain perilous districts remained off-limits to these intrepid pullers. 4. Couriers. Fearless messengers tasked with delivering messages across the city, a job fraught with danger, leading to a degree of unreliability. 5. Light boys. 
street urchins who wield wands of continual light, for Sigil knows no streetlights. These resourceful guides, besides illuminating the way, possess intimate knowledge of the city's intricacies, serving as both escorts and informal guides. In the distant past, Sigil was a realm marked by chaos and strife, a tumultuous era where guilds and factions warred incessantly for dominion. Over fifty factions, like unruly siblings vying for their parents' favor, sought to grasp the reins of power and control. It was during this time, an event known as the Great Upheaval, that the Lady of Pain intervened, culling the number of official factions to a mere fifteen. In a twist of fate, she bequeathed the city to these factions, leaving the tumultuous reign of guilds behind. This new order prevailed for six centuries, marking an era where power lay in the hands of the factions. In those tumultuous days, time flowed not as it does in the material plane, for the measurement of years hinged upon the rise and fall of faction leaders, known as factals. The fraternity of order often played a leading role in determining the city's temporal rhythms. Sigil's denizens grew accustomed to the ever-shifting tides of power and politics, rendering the timing of historic events of little consequence in their daily lives. If you want to know more about the 15 factions that now call Sigil home, I will be going into depth in another video. It is another tale for another time. In the shadows of history, an insidious plot unfolded an attempt to free the imprisoned god Mala from the clutches of Tullos in the savage Colothes layer of Carcery. This sinister scheme, facilitated by an artifact known as the Dreamlink, unleashed a lethal corruption, tainting the wild essence of the Beastlands and, by extension, multiple outer planes, including Sickle itself. The land brimmed with heightened aggression, a volatile affliction threatening to spill into the multiverse. 632 years after the Great Upheaval, during the 130th year of Factol Hashkar's rule, the smoldering tensions among the 15 factions ignited into an inferno. The faction war erupted, tearing at the very fabric of Sigil's society. A brutal and bloody conflict, it culminated in the Lady of Pain's decisive intervention, a complete dissolution of all factions. Some factions withered into oblivion, while others sought refuge in distant plains, their headquarters severed from the city's embrace. A few persisted as secretive underground movements, shadows of their former selves. In the wake of the faction war, new organizations emerged to assume administrative duties in the city's ever-evolving landscape. An advisory council, guided by prominent citizens, arose to preserve the tenuous peace, often recruiting adventurers to confront looming threats. Rhys, once the leader of the Transcendent Order, presided over this council. The mantle of jailers fell upon the Sons of Mercy, founded by a former Mercy Killer, while the Mutual Trade Association, led by guild leaders and overseen by Shemeshka, regulated commerce within the city's walls. Following the bitter echoes of the faction war, a new threat emerged from the depths of the multiverse, a lick named Vecna, and as always he was harboring grand ambitions of godhood. His nefarious plot to seize control of Sigil, and thereby dominate the entire multiverse sent shockwaves through the realms. The Lady of Pain, with the aid of courageous adventurers, repelled Vecna from the city's confines. Yet, the invasion left scars upon the multiverse's fabric. In the aftermath of Vecna's defeat, the Lady of Pain fortified Sigil's defenses and meticulously restructured the planar underpinnings of the city. Her purpose was twofold to mend the damage wrought by Vecna's intrusion and to safeguard the city from future threats of similar magnitude. In the ever-churning cauldron of Sigil, where realities converged and planes intersected, a populace as diverse as the cosmos itself called the city home. Roughly 50,000 permanent residents form the bedrock of Sigil's society, though this number is dwarfed by the surging tide of temporary inhabitants and visitors. At any given moment, a quarter of a million souls thronged the bustling streets and alleyways, making Sigil a true melting pot of existence. Within this teeming metropolis, one could encounter beings of every conceivable species drawn from the multiverse. Diversity reigned supreme in Sigil's labyrinthine alleys and crowded markets. However, long-time cages and native denizens, those who had embraced the city's embrace for countless years, harbor an innate discomfort when confronted with open spaces and unobstructed skies. The endless horizon of Sigil had become their realm, and the presence of a true sky was an alien concept to them. The denizens of Sigil spoke in a curious slang known as the Cant, a linguistic labyrinth that often left newcomers befuddled and bewildered. Those hailing from the material plane bore the brunt of Sigil's distinctive brand of humor, 
often referred to as clueless, outsiders, or with a measure of politeness, primes. Beneath the banter, however, a cautious respect simmered, for all recognized that traversing the distance from the material plane to Sigil demanded a certain measure of power. Sigil's urban terrain lacked the splendor of natural vegetation, with even its lone park prey to squatters. Razorvine, a pernicious growth native to the lower plains, proliferated unchecked, constituting a pervasive hazard. Darkened alleys teemed with rats and cranium rats, while rock grubs thrived in forsaken heaps of refuse. Bats took residence in lofty recesses, and the city's subterranean depths harbored a hidden population of werats. Amidst this stark urban backdrop, two unique avian species endured the gray-green pigeons that graced Sigil's skies and the ominous executioner's ravens, their bodies cloaked in gray with ebony heads and wings. In the heart of Sigil, where the City of Doors stands as a testament to the boundless wonders of the multiverse, one can't help but be captivated by its mysteries. From the ever-shifting landscapes to the Lady of Pain and her silent Dabas, Sigil beckons adventurers and explorers to unlock its secrets. As we close the pages of this tale, remember that Sigil is a realm where the boundaries of reality blur, and where every corner holds the promise of adventure. Whether you seek knowledge, fortune, or simply the thrill of the unknown, the City of Doors welcomes all who dare to step through its portals into a world where imagination knows no bounds. As always if you would like to hear many more tales don't forget to hit like and subscribe.